Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Dragon Network. As you can tell here, I'm going to be doing a Cosmic Vanguard video because there is something very important that happens on this day and that is Vanguard's newest set comes out and with it we finally get Dracona Kaiser Vermilion the Blood which is something that I've been waiting on for quite some time as Narukami have never really had good stuff to work with over the last while but starting with this set, that changes because number one the classic Vermilion builds are getting a new boss monster, and I wasn't going to wait for this set to actually come out to play test around with this. I actually proxied this up to have some games at locals with, and I have a fairly good idea of where I want to take the deck. But yeah, starting with this, Narukami gets some good support, and then the next set, they become tier 1. And that would be because of the Eradicators just being so damn good. Like, it's crazy how in Japan they took Dragonic Overlord the end off the restricted list get that deck going again, and it's still not getting anywhere near the number of tops as Eradicator Narukami. And this deck is going to become probably the most hated deck in the game when we get more Eradicators because they're just so good. And the fact is they still are getting more support. Bushy Bro is not going to be is not going to stop pushing this deck for any length of time soon. Each new set will come with one or two really de decent Narukamis, and yeah, like they even announced a cross ride for their new starter deck boss, Vowing Sword Dragon. In this case, Vowing Sword Dragon Reverse. And it takes advantage of the upcoming lock mechanic that can just yeesh, bind, I mean, uh, put a couple of your guys to the point where they're unplayable and then it gains a power boost. And combined with Vowing Sword Dragon's ability to give it another power boost and retire something when you ride on top of it, you're looking at a potential. 33,000 attacker just by itself for that turn, in addition to knocking one of your opponents from rear guards out end. That's going to be the game plan of this deck come uh, Eradicators is you're going to be doing a ton of retiring, like retiring this, retiring that, and getting power boost off of that, and then you're going to, I mean, yeah, you're going to descend it. We'll just come in and like do cleanup duty because if you block with it, then it's going to stand up again and swing again with higher power and an extra crit. So you got to block with it two times. Crazy, but anyway, let's get back to this. Um, just before I go over the deck, I did get asked if I would do more Vanguard and Pokemon content while I'm on the Yu-Gi-Oh hiatus, and I kind of want to. And if you guys really would like me to do some more stuff, especially like a how to play card by Vanguard, that's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. And I suppose this would be now as good of a chance as any to start like making videos on how to play Vanguard, how to understand it, and maybe even try and be a little competitive with it. If you guys are really interested in that, by all means, let me know in the comments below because I will definitely try and pursue a how to Vanguard series if there is enough interest in it. Or I might just do it regardless because. That's what I've always done is I've always just done whatever I felt like doing on this channel. And the more people that understand Vanguard, the better for it overall. Especially seeing how it keeps getting picking up steam and more steam in North America and whatnot. So, yes. This is my update to my long-running Vermilion Sky deck series, now known as Bloody Sky. As it's been upgraded with a powerful new cross rod. Alright, so now let's get to the actual deck itself. First up, the starter, Spark Kicker Dragoon, that isn't changed. And seeing how this is a blood profile, we'll be running four copies of the blood, along with four copies of Vermilion. So, I've gone on about how amazing Vermilion is, plus 3,000, I mean, plus 2,000 attack in the front row. They have to guard every single unit, we all know that. The blood is plus 5,000 attack every single unit in the front row with an extra crit. However, he's a limit break 5, and that's the one thing I feel that really hurts this card, is the fact he's in limit 5. Honestly, if I were to design this card, granted I'd probably be a little a bit biased in making this, but I would have made his ability limit break 4, plus 5,000, attack all units, but no extra crit. And what I mean by attack all units, not the front row, I'm talking everything. The front row and the back row. So basically, if this guy were to attack, everything dies. And the Vanguard is the only thing that stays alive. That's how I would make the blood. But instead, we have this. And I've mentioned before how I found it to be underwhelming. And it still is. Like, If if it wasn't Limit Break 5, I'd be more satisfied. But uh, like the problem is, though, if you even attempt to use this thing, your opponent is going to perfect guard it. 
that's just what happens with the, both Vermilions is when you use your skills, they will perfect guard their front row and just let their rear guards die. And at Limit Break 5, you're just going to get, like, maybe one chance at most to get this off. So, yeah, you're better off using the Counter Blasts for other things like Draconic Death Scythes and a Vermilion if you can beforehand. But the main thing about this guy, though, that is good is if he has a Vermilion in the soul, he'll go to twenty. He'll go to thir yeah, 13,000. And having that extra attack on defense is incredible as it requires your opponent to have more power through their triggers in order to hit through and allows you to force out more stuff from them in order to fully block this thing. Also, when he's burst uh, boosted by Photon Bomber Wyvern, he goes to 23,000, which is nice. And then for the Great Twos, I'm running four copies of Dusty Plasma Dragon. If you have a Vanguard with Vermilion in the name, he becomes a 12,000 attacker. A 12,000 attacker on its own is very good in Vanguard, but when it's boosted up by your 6,000 and 8,000 rear guards, you're swinging for 20,000 you know, uh, 20, yeah, 20, and 18,000 lines. That's enough to hit a Vanguard with a, I mean, that's enough to hit a Crossride Vanguard that also got one trigger boost, because that's 18,000, so. Yeah, he allows you to hit for very good uh, lines when swinging. Then for the supporting grade 2s, 2 Demonic Dragon Garuda, Damage and Flipper, 2 Dragonic Death Scythe, this just gets rid of annoying rear guards that you want out of the way, and just allows you to yeah, just clear stuff out. Especially those, uh, like, 10,000 boosters. You kind of want to get those out of the way. I don't know about these two guys. Well, actually, no, I'm keeping Garuda. But, yeah, I don't know about this. Like, originally, I was running, what was it? One more Garuda, and I think it was one more Thunderstorm Dragoon over the two Death Sites. But I found that I was rarely using my Counter Blasts in this style. So I just figured I would have the Death Sites in to, get my, to make use of the Counter Blasts that I'm not using and pick stuff off. Death Scythe, though, is going to become a staple at 4 in the Eradicator deck. Just saying. Then, running it out, two copies of Thunderstorm Dragoon. Pl Dusty Plasma Dragon is my go-to beat stick, but the 10,000 beater on its own is still nice. For the Grade 1s, four copies of Wyvern Guard Gold, who is getting reprinted in this new set. Got to have your four perfect guards. Your four 8,000 boosters. Helps you hit for high numbers. And three copies of arguably the best grade one booster in the game when it comes to just pure power. Like 10,000 to your Vanguard, in addition to what they are swinging with, is insane. And all you have to do is put your opponent at three damage, which is not that hard to do. They will, they'll block the early hits and save their defenses for when you're doing your Vermilion swings and such forth. Two copies of Dragon Monk and Kaku, Damage Inducer, Counter Blast 1, put a card in your damage zone, allows you to go into Limit Break and such. Two copies of Rising Phoenix. This deck is kind of short on draw power, and Phoenix allows you to make use of the soul that you never use and draw a card. Just make sure you don't soul blast out your familiar so you don't lose your power boosts. Then for the triggers, four heals. Four draws. I thought about actually taking these out now that this new set is giving Narakamis a full set of crits, but... Right now, I'm still keeping these in because the deck is really short on draw power and you kind of need to get to your grade zero, I mean your vanguards. But yeah, I've got the four copies of Yellow Gem Carbuncle, two copies of Malevolent Din, and two copies of Spark Edge Draco Kid. He's the new critical trigger in the set, and yeah, he's just basically another Carbuncle. I should probably take out the two dins and put these two more of these instead but i didn't print off two more of these because i didn't want to use up what remaining color i have for my printing ink so yeah i'll replace these guys with more of these or i might take out one uh, draw trigger and put another critical which i've seen a lot of lists doing as of late but there you go this is my deck profile of bloody skies the update to vermilion sky and, yeah, this is pretty much how I'm going to be running Naru's until we get Eradicators. Then I'll be going full out with the whole Dragonic Descendant Gauntlet Buster stuff. And I'll try and explore the other ways that Narukami can operate too. Because there's also Sweep Commando Dragon and... I forget what else. Oh yeah, Dungaree and his cross ride. That's actually going to become a viable thing now that I've seen what that new starter can do. Like... Oh my god, giving your rear guard dungarees the ability to hit for 11,000. That's awesome. But anyway, yeah, 
Here's my Vanguard deck profile, and again, tell me what you think about the idea of doing more like competitive Vanguard content, especially how to play the game. And yeah, I'll like I will go the full nine yards, like teaching you, uh, basically how everything works, and I'll even try and give somewhat of a breakdown over over the over the clans. So, but I admit I have not actually played very many of them, so. You have to take it with a grain of salt. If I can get some people actually who have played with certain clan styles to share their experiences with the decks, then I'll try and do that too. But anyway, thank you all for watching. This is Obvious TGS, jacking out.